Hey there Dungeon Masters, Lark here with another episode of Boss Battle. This episode we're going to be looking at the Displacer Beast. First thing we're going to want to look at is plot. Why does the party want to kill the Displacer Beast? Is it a guardian from some ancient evil that the party has to get past in a dungeon? Or maybe a wizard wants its coat to make a cloak of the Displacer Beast. Perhaps it's been terrorizing some forest where it's hunting unicorns and a ranger wants the thing taken out. Whatever the case is, you want to make sure you have a great reason for the party to want to finish this creature off. Next up, we got to set the scene. Is this going to be in a dungeon or is this going to be in the forest? Is this in the Feywilds? Decide where you're going to fight the creature so you can start to build its, its lair around its abilities. That way the party can't just swarm it and overwhelm it because it's only got a couple attacks and your party will likely outmaneuver it uh, or overpower it. For this reason, think about having rooms that have a lot of crisscrossing paths, or maybe an upper deck and a lower deck where the, the one can look down into the other. If you're doing a forest, then make sure you have trees that have low openings in their branches so the displacer beast can use that to climb up like real world jaguars do. All right. Like most of my battles, I've divided this fight into three acts that we're going to participate in, and we're going to max out the Displacer Beast hit points. That way, the party can hit it, it can run, and the fight can continue in other locations. Let's get into Act 1. Who is being hunted? That is really the question. The party should go out after the Displacer Beast, or whatever their goal is, and then the Displacer Beast, having recognized the party is in its lair or in its wood, is going to start hunting it, start tracking and hunting the party. Now, we want to do this to create this little bit of sense of drama where who's hunting who? Are we rolling perception checks back and forth? Is the party trying to be stealthy? This is going to create a scenario very similar to if you've seen the movie Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, who hasn't seen that, right? We've got this creature in the wood that is hunting this party of elite soldiers. Now, being a cat-like hunter, it typically won't try to take out an entire party in one go. It'll wait for one member of that party to be separate from the rest of the group before it launches its attack. This is a chance for your Displacer Beast to really show off what it's capable of, damage-wise and surprise-wise. As your party is searching for the creature, if one party member gets separated or tries to go ahead, take that as an opportunity for the Displacer Beast to attack from a tree, behind a bush, another level, from the shadows, whatever you can think of. Now, if the Displacer Beast is able to down a party member with this surprise attack, then it will grab them and start to drag them either around a corner or behind some bushes or up into a tree to be able to devour its meal. This should be its natural instinct if it is a hunter. However, if it does not down that party member, it's going to want to quickly make space to reset its attack and try again. Either way, once this creature breaks line of sight, we're moving on to Act 2. Now, as the party is looking for the creature wherever it is hidden, either with a downed party member or not, they can split their abilities between some of them ready in action in case the creature jumps out again, or rolling perception checks, survival checks, nature checks, whatever you feel is correct to find the creature. Now, a Displacer Beast is going to want to attack from a little bit of a distance because it has that 10-foot reach with its tentacles. For that reason, I would have it either in an alcove or up on a higher level, so as party starts to move through, they can reach down and hit it like a cat trying to reach out of a box. Bat, bat, bat. Now, being typically a predator, it can easily be distracted by a clever party. For that reason, it'll often try to make sure it can see everybody at once so it's not being spun around, and try to focus its multi-attack on one target at a time. If the party can keep it distracted, and this is the target, now this is the target, now this person moves in close, and this person moves in close, the Displacer Beast won't chase down one person, it'll continue to fight off whoever is closest. This is a great way for the party to be able to divvy up the damage it's dealing between each other. Now this cat is not going to fight to the death if it thinks that is the way the fight is going. Once it gets to bloodied status, about half HP, it's going to bail out of there. This is a creature that should not be used to being the hunted, and is typically the hunter. If the party wants to finish the beast, Act 3 is going to be a chase scene. Now, you may run chase scenes differently from other people do, that's fine. One thing I recommend is skipping opportunity attacks entirely during a chase scene, as all members are moving somewhat simultaneously. And, if you like, you can have con saves to see if people can keep their endurance up. If a lot of the party is making the save and the cat fails, they start to close the distance. Or, vice versa, maybe the cat starts to gain a little space from the party. This should be the most exciting part of the campaign, the final chase, 
as the party is closing the distance on the creature or it's getting away, add some environmental factors to change the game. Yes, attacks will be going back and forth as they're moving with each other. However, the environment can change things vastly. Con saves is fun, but that gets a little bit repetitive. Instead of always doing a con save for endurance, have a branch fall down or a tree fall down in front of them and have them react. Maybe the cat has to react or the party gets a little bit closer. That's a great way to have the creature start to fall behind and let the party catch up with it. Or if it's doing poorly, have some stuff happen that gets in the way of the party. Maybe they run through a bear's den and Mama Bear jumps up and distracts two of the party members where they've got to either fight around it or get away from it. If you need more ideas, look up the Wilderness Chase Complications in the Dungeon Master's Guide if you're playing 5th Edition. It's a great uh, tool. Or just be as creative as you like. Think of any movie where a creature is being chased or hunted, and or a person is, and stuff happens during that chase. Anytime it's in the wilderness, it's going to work for this. If you're doing it in a dungeon, then find some movie like The Mummy where things can go wrong in the midst of the dungeon. Alright, quick recap. First, have some plot tools to make sure the party needs this creature dead if you want it to be a boss battle. Don't just let it be a guard because then when it runs away, the party has no reason to chase it, and that's not really a boss battle. Second, the hit and run mechanic. Have the creature jump up, bap, 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 and then run away. Jump out, bap, 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 and run away until it can get somebody down and try to ch drag them into the wood or up onto an alcove. Finally, Act 3, the injured predator. This is where we get to have that Arnold Schwarzenegger versus the Predator fight at the end where they've tracked the blood, the chase is in, and now it's whatever cleverness the party can come up with while this creature is trying to escape that they can use to either finish it during the chase scene or maybe have to hunt it down while it's licking its wounds. If you have any ideas on how to make the Displacer Beast the best battle ever, please leave those in the comments below. Check out the comments to see if anybody else has posted. Again, these are my ideas, but I want to hear what you guys have to say. Let us know what you think could be an awesome way to make a Displacer Beast the best battle ever. It's great for a low-level party, and it's a fantastic, unique creature that I think the Monster Manual doesn't really do a whole lot with. Let me know what you think would be an awesome way to fight a Displacer Beast besides its ability. We know its abilities. That's what makes the fight interesting. But how to make the environment, the scene, more interesting. Let me know in those comments. All right, I'm DM Lark. Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked this video. And I will play you later.